Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today's Torah portion is Sharai Sarah. It is filled with sorrow and romance, beginning with the death of Sarah to Yitchak finding a bride and ending with Abraham being reunited with his one true love. There are so many passages for us today that are relevant for us today and pictures of our Messiah throughout. I pray you stick around as we search for those Torah treasures. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Thank you for being with us today on Torah Treasures. It's such a blessing to be here and spending this time with you, and I hope that you have a wonderful Sabbath day. I'd like to say thank you and Shabbat Shalom to some people that we've got in the chat with us already. Ak, Shabbat Shalom, brother. It's good to have you with us, as always. You are as my king. Shabbat Shalom. Shoshana, our dear sister. Hope you have a lovely Sabbath, sister. I hope you enjoy later. Asia, good to see you as always, sister. Shabbat Shalom. Rin Tin Tin, Shabbat Shalom. It's lovely to have you here with us as always. Such a blessing. We've got Daniel here with us as well. Shabbat Shalom. Really enjoy having you with us as always, brother. It's such a blessing. Michael, Shabbat Shalom. Got many people here. Pray that your wife is feeling better, brother. We really do pray and lift her up for you. Shabbat Shalom, daughter of Yahweh. It's lovely to have you here with us again. Shabbat Shalom. I believe that is our dear sister Atara. I hope I'm right. Um, Facebook sometimes doesn't bring up the names. So I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but Shabbat Shalom. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm just trying to work on the music. So if it's a bit too loud, a bit too quiet, please let us know. And I'm trying to just... But so, so thank you all for being with us today. Sorry, Sue Squib. I'm so sorry, Sue. Shabbat Shalom, sister. It's lovely to have you with us. Dredge, I can see that you are in the chat as well. So Shabbat Shalom, brother. Um, so Shabbat Shalom, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray that you have a lovely day. I'm really looking forward to this Torah portion today to jump into. Um, it's called Sarah's Lives or Sarah's Life. However, we begin with the death of Sarah. So it's quite interesting that. But there's so many wonderful pictures throughout so many messages for us that are relevant today i really do hope that you enjoy so i'm going to start us off in prayer and then we're going to jump straight into it and that's wonderful to hear michael i'm glad that she's doing better brother our father abba yah yahweh father we come before in yahushua's name and father we just praise you we glorify you we thank you for all you do we thank you for this sabbath day and having this opportunity to to spend in your word and spend with brothers and sisters having that fellowship father it's such a blessing and i thank you Father, I ask that you be with us today, dwelling with us, filling us with your ruach, filling us with your words and helping us find your truths. Father, we lift all those up to you around the world that are in need of healing, whether it's physical, spiritual or mental. Father, we lift them all up to you, like Michael's wife, like many of us that are feeling many effects at the moment. Father, we lift them all up to you and we just ask for that healing. You are Yahweh you can heal. We ask that you provide for us as well, Father, and just be with us, giving us the strength to endure in these times. Father, we thank you. We just ask you to be with us today. In Yahushua's name, amen. So I'm really looking forward to today, as always. Really, it's such a blessing to have this opportunity with you all and jump into this word. So we will get going. Try our best to get us started here. So Torah treasures, we like to always start off with these verses. So Psalms. 19 verse 7 through 10 the torah of yahweh is perfect restoring the soul the testimony of yahweh is sure making wise the simple the statue of yahweh are right rejoicing the heart the commandment of yahweh is pure enlightening the eyes the fear of yahweh is clean enduring forever the judgments of yahweh are true and righteous altogether more to be decided are they than gold yea than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb 
and Psalm 119, 72. The Torah of your mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. And Psalm 119, 127. Therefore I love your commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. So in the Bereshit today, we'll be looking at verses 23 through to 1 through to 25, 18. The half Torah is First Kings, verse, uh, chapter 1, 1 to 31. Yehokadim is our better portion, chapter 4, verses 3 to 14. And that's the in- interaction with Yehusha at the, with the Sumerian woman at the well in, in Shechem. And I, it's one of my favorite, favorite shows that we have in uh, favorite, sorry, favorite events, shall I say, in the better. And additionally, Yovelin or Jubilees, we have from 19.1 to 23.32. And in Jubilees, we have many chapters dedicated to Abraham and his death towards the end of those. And um, there really is, Abraham does a blessing and a prayer for his family before he dies. And it is wonderful. So if you get a chance, I, I implore you to read that. So the layout today, we begin in verse 1 of 23 with Sarah's death and burial. Next, 24, 1, Abraham sends his servant to find a bride for Yitzhak. And we'll be looking at that servant and what it may mean or who it may be pointing us to. Genesis 24, 62, the marriage of Yitzhak and Rivka. We have Genesis 25, 1, Abraham marries Keturah. 25, 7, the death of Abraham. And then ending with... 12 Yishmael's descendants. So the name of this Torah portion is Sha'ai Sarah. I hope I'm saying that right. And it means Sarah's life or Sarah lived. You know, we see different um different translations depending on uh, what Torah portion you're looking at or where you're looking at. And this this portion is filled, as we mentioned at the beginning, with much sorrow and romance. We begin, we see Abraham mourning for Sarah after her death and being laid to rest. This is followed by Yitzhak finding a wife, someone that will help support him through the difficult times and of losing a parent. The portion ends with Abraham being laid to rest in the same place as his beloved wife. It is believed that Sarah was a very righteous and noble woman, with the only time that her, was she stumbled was with Hagar and Yishmael. the only time we're led to believe where she may have stumbled and act, acted unrighteously. We always hear about how righteous Abraham was, but it's believed that Sarah was just as righteous. And Proverbs 19, 14, Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent woman is from Yahweh. And amen, that is so true. A prudent woman is from Yahweh. And just Shabbat Shalom. Mar and Pa, it's good to see you. It's okay, you're a bit late, it's fine. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're having a blessed Sabbath day. So now we'll look at breaking this this, this word down, these two words for Sarah lived. We have the chet, which is the wall outside dividing half or separation. We have that yod, the arm, hand, work, deed, worship or praise. Again, which followed by another yod. We then begin the word Sarah, which is a shin, which means teeth, sharp, press, destroy, consume. The resh is the first to head the prince or authority, and that hay is to look, to behold, to reveal the breath or ruach. So when breaking these down, what I was seeing when I was looking at this was we are separated through sin, but by his work and our worship, that is destroyed. So that through the prince, all will be revealed and uh, it's just a beautiful message again about how that sin is destroyed that destruction that comes with the sin is destroyed as well through Yahushua through his work and our worship and praise to him and thank you very much Asia thank you very much sister this is such a blessing to me and my family as well to be able to spend this time with you with our show last night and the show today. It's such a blessing just to have that fellowship with everyone and and looking at the word with everybody as well. It's such, so wonderful. So now we're going to begin. So verse one, chapter 23, verse one. And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years 
of the life of Sarah. So it's believed that Sarah was very youthful in her old age through her obedience to Yahweh and to Abraham. And we see that every location where they dwelt, people of the land found her fair to look upon. We see this many times. You know, Abraham feared that the people would want to take her and they'd kill him because of it. One example is in Genesis 12, 11, And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Mitzrayim that he said unto El Sarah, his woman, Behold now, I know that you are a fair woman to look upon. So we know that she was very fair to look upon. In the book of Yasha, we see that Sarah's death is actually linked to the sacrifice of Yitzhak and the emotional strain that it may have took upon her. Now, I know that I I do bring up Yasha sometimes. I'm not sure if I'm sold on it um, compared to Enoch or, or Yovelim uh, or Jubilees. However, I do like to look at it sometimes and see what, what they're, they're saying around certain events. So we read in Joshua 23, 86, And behold, Satan came to Sarah in the shape of an old man, and he came and stood before her, and he said unto her, I speak, I spoke falsely unto you, for Avram did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And when she heard the, heard the word, her joy was so exceedingly violent on account of her son that her soul went out through joy. She died and was gathered to her people. So it's a very interesting account there. The, you know, before it, Satan's been coming to her, telling her that your son's dead, Abraham's killed him, he's, he, and, and, and this emotional strain, this turmoil, this was placing on her. And then when she finds out that he's actually al- alive, the relief, the joy overcomes her and she, she dies. So it's, it's very interesting that. So verse 2. And Sarah died in Kirat Arba. The name is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. So Sarah's death greatly affects Abraham. And we see that he mourns and weeps. You know, we are to mourn when we lose people. We've done a study on this as well about whether we're allowed to grieve. However, we do see for our scripture times of mourning. You are given us times of mourning for when we lose people and it will not be until new Yerushalayim when all that suffering will come to an end revelation 21 4 such a wonderful verse this is an elohim shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall be any more pain for the former things are passed away and it's just so wonderful that thinking of that time there'll be no more pain no more sorrow no more suffering it's just it's just wonderful to, to always look at that verse and look at what we've got to look forward to so the place where sarah died was called kirat arba and it's from two words and in the sense and it says in the sense of flooring as a building or a city so that's the first word and then we also have the second form is the masculine and it means four so we have essentially here the city of four And it's believed that this relates to the four patriarchs that were buried there. It's believed that Adam, Abraham, which we'll see later on, Yitzhak and Yaakov were all buried here. And that's why we get the name uh, City of Four. So carrying on now, verse three. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spoke unto the sons of Sheth, saying, so... Abraham approaches the sons of Chet, who are from the line of Ham and Canaan. So in Yovelim chapter 10, we read that some of Ham's descendants went to the land of Shem. It was not their portion, but they dwelt there. So we see how these unrighteous people were living in the land that was promised to Shem. We see descendants of Ham actually in it. It's where we get the Kenaim in the land also. And... So it looks like my lighting's just changed to red and blue. Um, for some reason, my lighting is changing, and I'm not sure why. I don't have the remote here for the lighting. Um, okay. So according to the book of Yovelin, this was to be his last test. But he was found patient and faithful to Yahweh in Sarah's death. Yeah, Catherine's having a good laugh now because the remote is downstairs with the kids. 
and they're messing with my lighting. So, um, so yeah, I hope you have a good laugh and enjoy that. Um, still red at the moment. <laughs> so, uh, Jubilees or Yovelim 19 verse 3 to 5, it said, And Abraham went to mourn over her and bury her, and we tried him to see if his Ruach were patient, and he were not indignant in the words of his mouth. And he was found patient in this and was not disturbed. For in patience of the Ruach, he conversed with the children of Chet to the intent that they should give him a place in which to bury his dead. And Yahweh gave him grace before all who saw him. And he besought, his, he besought in gentleness the sons of Chet. And they gave him land of the double cave over against Mamre, that is Hebron, for 400 pieces of silver. And uh, just say, Shalom, Bridal Armour. Shalom, sister. It's great to have you with us. Lovely to see you. And Rin Tin Tin, just while we're having this pause with this lighting, uh, Rin's put up Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed to all us. Amen. Amen, sister. Thank you very much. I know Shabbat Shalom Nina, it's good to have you with us sister, thank you very much for joining. So carrying on now in verse 4. I am a stranger and a sojourner with you, give me a possession of a burying place with you that I might bury my dead out of my sight. So Abraham is seeking a burial place for Sarah and it's believed that he is aware of the importance of this cave and that Adam and Hua are buried there. And he wants the best for his wife. Now, when we, we think of this, we, we think of preparing that burial place for his wife. It reminds me of how Yahushua has gone to prepare a place for us. Revelation 21, 2. And I, Yehokanim, saw the holy city renew Jerusalem coming down from Elohim out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her man. And Yehokan in 14.2, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself where I am. There you may be also. So here we can see the first picture of Yahushua in going to prepare that place for us. And here we have Avraham preparing that place for us when we are reunited. Now carrying on now, verse 5 and 6. And the children of Chet answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my Adonai, you are a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchres, bury your dead. None of us shall withhold from you his sepulchre, but you, but that you may bury your dead. So Abraham's fame, is believed here, has surrounded the land. It's spread, and these people have respect for Abraham. Here he's called a mighty prince. And the words for mighty is Elohim. The word Elohim and prince is Nasai. Nasai meaning an exalted one. A king or a sheik, also a rising miss. Captain, chief, governor, prince, ruler. So we see here that they are recognizing Abraham here as the exalted one of Yahweh. And because of this, they allowed Abraham to choose from any of the sepulchres, any for a burial place. This also confirms that the cave which Abraham chooses had already been used as a burial place as well. It's referred to as a sepulchre, which is a place of burial. So again, possibly supporting the idea that Adam was buried here. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Chet, and he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me, and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zechor, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he was, which is in the end of his field. For as much money as it is worth, he shall give it to me for possession of a burying place among you. So the place which Abraham wants is called the cave of Machpelah. We've seen that in the account in Jubilees as well. Now the word Machpelah, it means a fold 
Machpelah, a place in Palestine. So the, the meaning of the word is folded or doubled, we see here with that fold. And there's been several different interpretations out there on what this name of the cave could mean. So first is that doubled refers to the layout of the cave, as it's possibly a cave on top of a cave. It's a double cave. Another is that the name of the town refers to the patriarchs. So this refers to the four doubles that are buried there. You know, the couples that are buried there, Adam and Chua, will see Sarah and Abraham later on by the end of this Torah portion as well, and the others going on. So it's possibly referring to that. And ultimately, this double could also make reference to those that are buried there and the reward of the blessings that they receive. They receive such like double blessings and it could possibly refer to that. So there's several interpretations out there on what the name of this, this cave represents. So Mechpela. So I'd like to break this one down. Very interesting name. So we have that Mem, which is the water. Blood, chaos, or mighty. We have the calf, which is the open hand to allow or bend. We have the pay, which is that open mouth to speak or word. The lamed is the shepherd's staff, be the shepherd to teach, or Yahusha. And the hay is that breath, it means to behold, to look, to reveal, the ruach as well. So, in the place that Abraham chose to bury Sarah, and where the patriarchs are buried, patriarchs are buried. We see through his blood and water, it allowed for the words teachings to be revealed. So again, in this place, we can see a wonderful picture of Yahusha and what would come to pass. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Chet, and Ephron the Chittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Chet, even all that went into the gate of his city, saying, Nay, my Adonai, hear me. The field give I you, and the cave that is in thereof, I will give it you. In the presence of the sons of the people give I it you. Bury your dead. And Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land, and he spoke unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if you will give it, I pray you hear me. I will give you money for the field, Take it off me, and I will bury my dead there. So Abraham bows himself to the people. He's showing that honor and respect that we are to show people when we're dealing with them and interacting with people always. We are to have respect to all people we encounter. We see here that Abraham does not want the land to be given to him, but rather he wants to have an official transaction take place with witnesses so there will be no dispute over the land throughout his generations in the last Torah portion, we, we looked at how Avimelech and his men, they argued with Abraham over that well that he dug. And they took it by force. We see that in Genesis 21, 22 to 34. Abraham does not want a repeat of that. He wants to have an official transaction take place. So when he's dead, this would be passed on down his generations. It is believed that this is the first recorded transaction and transfer of property in history and that this established four different methods that a land could be required be acquired through so we say jewish law so we have by money by deed witnesses and physical possession and here we see all four take place so carry on now and ephrod answered abraham saying unto him my adonai hearken unto me the land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and you? Bury therefore your dead. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron. And Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of Chet. 400 shekels of silver, current money with the merchants. So just quickly, we'll have a look at trans uh, other prices and shekels for other things so we see in exodus 21 32 an ox was to cost 30 shekels it says a man for 50 shekels in leviticus 23 and a woman for 30 shekels in leviticus 27 4 and when avra when king david brought the property that the temple would be built on it was only 50 shekels and we see this in second samuel 24 24 so it appeared that the value placed on the cave and land was higher than it was worth 
However, we see that this did not discourage Avraham as he wanted the best for his wife. It's quite interesting. First, they wanted to give it him for free. They wanted to give him the land. They said they didn't want any money. And then all of a sudden, they want 400 shekels of silver. So we see how they, they change their, their tune and, and they know that Avraham wants this. So they want to make it worth their while. And the field of Ephron, which was in Mechpala, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave, which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field that were in the borders round about were made sure unto Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Chet for all that went into the gate of the city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his woman, in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre. The same is Hebron, the land of Canaan, and the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Chet. So as Abraham brought this cave for Sarah, we must remember that Yahweh for us as well. Again, another link. First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh, which is in you, which you have of Elohim, and you are not your own? For you are brought with a price. Therefore glorify Elohim in your body and in your Ruach, which are Elohim's. And first Corinthians 7, 23. Ye are brought with a price. Be ye not servants of men, brethren. Let every man wherein he is called therefore abide with Elohim. And we were bought with the highest price. We see Abraham pay more here for this cave than what it's worth and worth. And we were really paid the old, by, for the ultimate price with the blood of our Messiah, with Yahushua's blood, we were paid and redeemed. Again, we're just seeing links here with Yahushua. So this Torah portion is called Sarah's Life. And in this chapter, there is a shift now from Sarah to Rivka. In a sense, it may be appearing as though she is replacing Sarah. After Abraham and Sarah and their righteousness, there will now be a focus on his Yechid Yitzhak and his wife Rivka and their righteousness. So by the end of this Torah portion, Abraham and Sarah will both be dead and will then be focusing on Yitzhak and Rivka. And Abraham was old and was well stricken in age, and Yahweh had blessed Abraham in all things. So in all the things that Abraham did, he had been blessed. And we saw that every time he faced trouble, he was blessed. And he was known by the people of the land we just seen. Jubilees 19, 8 says, This is the temp trial where with Abraham was tried, and he was found faithful, patient in the Ruach. In Jubilees, it tells us that he was tested ten times, and each time he was found to be patient and faithful. To Yah. And Jubilees 23 10. For Abraham was perfect in all his deeds with Yahweh and now pleasing in righteousness all the days of his life. So Abraham really, he walked with Yah, he walked in the ways of Yah, and he was always to be found perfect and righteous. And he was blessed because of this righteousness and obedience to Yahweh throughout those trials and tests. And we are told that we will be blessed. And those that delight in his ways, in Yah's ways, will be blessed. Psalm 112, 1 through to 3. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that fears Yahweh, that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the Yasharim shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Hearken and Isaiah 51, 1, 2 and 2. Come to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek Yahweh, look unto the rock when you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit when you are dug. Look unto El Avram your father, and unto El Sarah that bore you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. Hallelujah, and, and amen. Michael, brother, he was called a friend of Yahweh. And how amazing is that to be called the friend of Yahweh? I know it's something that we all would long and strive to be called. And Shabbat Shalom, Brother Stephen and Sister Rebecca. It's great to have you with us, brother and sister. Hope you're having a wonderful, blessed day. And Dora of Yahweh says, It's so interesting how our patriarch were tested and stood for Yah's righteousness. May we each be found standing in such character when we each are tested. Amen, sister. Amen. And we should be. We will all face those testings 
in our lives. We will have difficulties in our life. We'll have times where it's it's tr it's hard. It's hard. It's not going to be easy. We must remember that Yahusha suffered. So why should we have an easy life? Why should we have things without without any struggle? But we must remember, as James tells us, to, to count these trials and tests a blessing. And we see it here with Abraham, how he was blessed after enduring these. Verse 2, And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray you, your hand under my thigh. So this servant here is not named. From previous verses, we can attempt to identify him as Eliezer, as Abraham's, as it is believed that he is Abraham's eldest servant, and it, he would be his heir if he remained childless. We read this in Genesis 15, 2, when it says, And Abraham said, Adonai Yahuwah, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. So there in Genesis, in, um, Genesis 15, we're told that his uh, oldest servant, who he believed would be his heir before he had a, uh, had a son, would be Eliezer. So therefore, we must ask ourselves why he has not been named here. I believe that it is though we can draw and think of our Messiah, our Mashiach, when we, we read of this story. That servant that was sent to us to prepare the bride. Yeah, I believe that we can draw those pictures in this story. Zechariah 3, 8. Hear now, O Yahushua, the high priest, and your fellows that sit before you. For they are men wandered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. We see Yahushua there here being referred to as the servant. Isaiah 42, 1, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my ruach upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the nations. And in both these verses, Zechariah, Isaiah here in Genesis, this word servant is, I believe it's Obed, it's the same word used. And so we see here with this link, this reference to Yahushua. And Philippians 2, 6 to 8, who, being in the form of Elohim, thought it not robbery to be equal of Elohim, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the tree, the cross, whatever you want to say. But we see here then in, in Philippians again, we hear, we read of Yahushua again being called that servant. So, here we're seeing ties and links to Yahushua being that servant. And I believe it's possible that in this story now, the servant going to prepare the bride, going to get the bride for the Yahid, we really can see pictures of Yahushua. And it's something that really made, come into this, made this story here, made this Torah portion really jump out and come to life for me, seeing those pictures of Yahushua. And we know that Yahushua speaks of the wedding banquet where the king sends his servants to get guests. So we won't go through all of it, but Matthew 22, 1 onwards. And Yahushua answered and spoke unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of Elohim is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come again. He sent forth other servants saying, Tell them, which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to the merchandise. And the remnant took his servant and entreated him spitefully and slew him. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrath, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, and they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore to the highways, and as many as you shall find, bring to the marriage. So that so those servants went out to the highways and gathered altogether as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And we know that Yahushua would come to gather as many as he could through the truth to this his wedding that is to come. So carrying on now, back in Genesis 24, verse 2 and 3. Put, I pray you, your hand under my fire, and I will make you swear seven oaths by Yahweh, the Elohai of heaven and the Elohai of earth. And you shall not take a woman unto my son of the daughters of the Kenaim, among whom 
I dwell. So Avram asks him to put his hand under his thigh and swear an oath. It's the same as we see Yaakov ask Yosef to swear in the same manner. So in Genesis 47, 29, and the time drew near that Yashorel must die, and he called his son Yosef, and he said unto him, If now I have found grace in your sight, put, I pray, your hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray you, in midst Baim. So it's possible, as this was the promise, was witnessed by the covenant of circumcision. That's one interpretation of it, by putting his hand under his thigh. So, between, so there was that witness there, the circumcision, the covenant between Abraham and Yahweh. Also, it could be swearing on the seed of his generations as it was close to that bodily member, shall we say, for the seed of generations. So he was swearing on his seed here as well. And Bridal Armour said, Hosea 4.14, Therefore I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. Hosea 4.14, Amen. And what's so beautiful there are so many beautiful verses in Hosea but you shall go unto my country and unto my kindred and take a woman unto my son Yitshak so Avram does not wish to have a daughter of the Kenayim to be married to his son as he is aware that they are not of the line of Shem but of Ham and we are told that we are to keep within our tribe Numbers 36 6 says let them marry to whom they think best only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry and we are not to be together with the unbelievers second corinthians 6 14 be ye not equally yoked together with unbelievers what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness what communion has light with darkness a marriage is to be a partnership to be walking together but that can't be possible if one does not believe in yahuwah Amos 3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? And this is what Abraham wants. He doesn't want to see his, his son being unequally yoked. He doesn't want to see his son being married to someone that is a believer of unrighteousness, that's a walker in wickedness. He wants his son to be equally yoked with a believer in Yahuwah, knowing the truth, knowing the Torah. And when Yasharel entered into the land, they were not to have their children marry the children of the nation. So we read this also in Deuteronomy. There's many accounts in Deuteronomy, but here's from chapter 7, verse 1 through 4. It says, When Yahuwah al Hakim shall bring you into the land wherever you go to possess it, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittaim and the Gergesim and the Emarim and the Kenaim and the Perizim and the Hivaim and the Euphasim, seven nations greater and mightier than you, and when Yahweh shall deliver them before you, you shall smite them and utterly destroy them. You shall cut no covenant with them, nor shall mercy unto them. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughter shall not go give unto his sons, nor his daughters shall take unto your sons. For they will turn away your son from following me, that they may serve other Elohim. So will the anger of Yahweh be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. And we've seen this last night when we spoke on King Shalom, King Solomon. He was the wisest there was. He got that wisdom from Yah. However, we see that when he took many women from the other nations, they turned him away and he went and worshipped their Elohims. And because of this, destruction came. So verse 5 now and 6. And the servant said unto him, Perchance the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land. Must I need bring your son again unto the land where, from whence you came? And Abraham said unto him, Beware that you bring not my son hither again. Yahweh high of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spoke unto me, and that swore seven oaths unto me, saying, Unto your seed will I give you this land. He shall send his angel before you, you shall take a woman unto the unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow you, then you shall be clear from this from this my oath. Only bring not my son hither again. And the servant put his hand under his the thigh of Abraham is Adonai and swore seven oaths to him concerning the matter. So we see here that the servant asks Abraham what to do if he finds a woman and she's not willing to come with him or leave her family behind and whether he should 
take Yitchak to her. However, Abraham rejects this as Yahweh has called him out of the land and from his kindred to come and dwell in the land that was promised. So he rejects this idea. And if this was to be the case, Abraham allows the oath to be terminated and the servant relieved of his duties. However, this just highlights the confidence that he has that Yahweh will find a wife for Yitzhak. We see that Yahweh shall send an angel to lead him as they were led in the wilderness as well. We see Deuteronomy 29.5, and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. So we see they'll be led by an angel. And if we fear and trust Yahweh, then he will guide and instruct us. Psalm 32, 8, 32, 6. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. The angel of Yahweh encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. So we see the angel of Yahweh encamp around them and will show them where to go. Psalm 73, 24. You shall guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. So we see how Yahweh will guide this servant to find a woman. And Abraham is very confident that this woman will want to come and marry Yitzhak. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his Adonai and departed. For all the goods of his Adonai were in his hand. And he arose and went to Aram Naharim, the city of Nahor. So we see that his servant went with abundance of goods. From his master to find a bride for his son and this was to impress also to show the wealth that abraham had been blessed with by yahweh he was willing to pay more than that was required to get a bride for his son as with abraham paying over the odds paying over price for that cave that sepulcher for his his wife we see the same here he's willing to to pay more for his son we were brought again, as we spoke about with that Omer price, the, the blood of his Yaqib, Yahusha, Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Ruach HaKadosh has made you overseers to feed the called out assembly of Elohim, which he has purchased with his own blood. We've been purchased with that blood, Yahusha's blood, so that we can abide with him. So verse 11 onwards now. And he made his camels to kneel down about the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, Oh, Yahuwah Elohai Adonai of Abraham, I pray you send me goods. Speed this day and show kindness unto my Adonai Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down your pitcher, I pray you, that I might drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give your camels drink also. Let the same be she that have appointed for her, your servant Yitzhak, and therefore, and thereby shall I know that you have showed kindness unto my Adonai. And Shabbat Shalom controversy of Elohai. And beautiful reminds me of the bride and Messiah. We were free we must be willing to go amen sister amen nina we should be we, we must be willing to go we have that free choice to choose whether we want to go or not so again we see that the significant of this significant event to find a woman that would essentially be replacing sarah as a woman of righteousness took place at a well it's very interesting you know done a study on wells before i find it very significant some of these events that take place and we see here the links here now to this event taking place at a well and we see in the best portion your in chapter four that event with yahusha and the woman at yahoo's well we see the significance in these events here and how it ties in now to the better portion so this servant had been led by yahuwah to this place and asked for a sign in showing him whom he should take as yitzhak's bride here we see that many women were coming here drawing water and he needs that sign to tell him which woman to approach so verse 15 and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold Rivka came out he was born to Bethuel son of Milka the woman of Nahor Abraham's brother with her pitcher upon her shoulder so Yahweh works fast and before he had even finished speaking here Rivka appears who is from Abraham's brother last week we finished looking at the line 
of Abraham's brothers and we see Milka and Bethuel in it and it was because it was showing us where Rivka would come from. <laughs> Sorry about that, apologies. Apologies all. Um, okay, Catherine's having a good laugh at me there. So, we will now see the characteristics that Rivka has and how we are to be and we are to have as the bride for Yahweh and Yahushua. So, carrying on now, 2416. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because as they say. Um, so, uh, here we go. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. A virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So, first here we see Rivka was a virgin. And we are to be a virgin for Yahweh. Therefore, we must establish what here is we what, what is meant to be a virgin for Yahuwah. So 2 Corinthians 11, 2. For I am jealous over you with a righteous jealousy, for I have espoused you to be one man, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Mashiach. So we are to be pure with undivided devotion to Yahuwah. 1 John 3, 2 onwards. Beloved, now are we the sons of Elohim, as it does not yet appear that we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. We are to be pure. We are to just be focused and devoted on Yahushua and Yahweh. Isaiah 62, 5. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall the sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your Elohim rejoice over you. And we, we know that Yahushua also spoke about the parable of the virgins as well. Those that were ready and those that were not. So we see here, maybe it's not just enough to be that, that virgin, that chaste virgin for, for Yahushua. Now, this is that parable, Matthew 25, 1 through uh, 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil. For our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be enough for us and you. But you go rather to them that sell and buy yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgin, saying, Adonai, Adonai, open to us. But he answered and said, Amen, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of Adam comes so we see here that only those virgins that had the oil in their lamps were allowed to go to that marriage so therefore next what does it mean about the oil what does it mean to have oil so throughout scriptures we are given several examples of what oil may be i know there's a few um different understandings on this oil was in the lamp and therefore it was used to give light we are told Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and the light unto my path. Proverbs 6, 23, for the commandment is a lamp and the Torah is light and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So we see that the Torah and the commandments are a lamp and a light to our path. We also see that oil being light to the name and having Yahu and Yahushua's name are so important. So the songs of Solomon 1, 3. Because of the savour of your good ointment, your name is an ointment poured forth. Therefore do the damsels love you. So we see there the name also being referred to as oil. Thank you so much, Asia. So finally, the Ruach HaKadosh has been compared to oil as well. In Luke 4, 18 onwards. And it says, the Ruach HaKadosh is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the better to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, 
and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. So we see they're anointed with the Ruach HaKodesh. You're anointed with oil. You're anointed with the Ruach HaKodesh. So we are to have the word, the Torah, the name, and the Ruach to fill our lamps. So we see this. This is what we need to be that virgin that is ready, like Rivka. So carrying on now back in Genesis. In Bereshit 24, 17 onwards. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray you, drink a little water of your pitcher. And she said, Drink my Adonai. She hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. So we see the next characteristic here that Rivka portrays, that Rivka shows, is to be generous and not self-seeking. Here we see her being generous and giving water to the servant and going and getting the water again for the camels. She's being so generous. Proverbs 28, 27. He that gives unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hides his eye shall have many a curse. Psalms 112, 5. A good man shows favour and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. 1 John 3, 17. But whoso has the words good and sees his brother have need and shuts up his heart of compassion from him he dwells in him now dwells the love how dwells the love of Elohim in him. And we are told that love does not seek its own interests as well. We have love. We, we shouldn't be self-seeking. First Corinthians thirteen five does not be does not behave itself and seemingly seeks not its own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil. And that's just just a, just a verse from such a wonderful chapter in Corinthians thirteen. We see there that what having that true love really does look like. Now we have some more verses as well about not being that self-seeking, being generous. Matthew 5.39 But I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue you, will sue you at your judgment and take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. And whosoever shall compel you, compel you to go a mile, go with him too. Give to him that asks of you, and from him that one would borrow, of you turn not away matthew 6 1 onward take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them otherwise you have no reward to your father which is in heaven therefore when you do your arms do not sound a shofar before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that you may have glory of men amen i say unto you that you that have their reward but you but when you do arms, let not your left hand know what your right hand does, that your arms may be in secret, and your father, which sees in secret, shall reward you openly. And Luke 21, 1. And he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw also a certain poor woman casting in thither two mites. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast more than they all for all these have their abundance cast in unto the offerings of Elohim, but she of her penury has cast in all the living that she had. We see there this in this woman the generosity that she had in giving, giving all that she had in a sense. And she was she was not self-seeking, she was being generous. And again, we see these characteristics and what we are to have in Rivka. Now, when we look at the name Rivka, we see that it is a resh, which is a prince, head, Yahusha. We have the bait, which is the tent dwelling home in. We have the calf, which is time, horizon, circle. And we have the hay, which means to behold, reveal breath, the ruach, to look. So when we put these together, we see Yahusha will leave his dwelling at the appointed time to reveal 
the truth. So in this name and story of the servant being sent, we see pictures of our Mashiach, Yahushua, who left to show the world the truth of Yahweh and to prepare the bride. We're seeing all that here in this. Like I say, there's so many wonderful pictures in this account, in the story that we can see of Yahushua being sent to bring us his truth. So carrying on now. Verse 21 onwards. And the man and the man wandering at her held his peace to wit whether Yahweh had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass that the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring, an earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets of her hands and ten shekels weight of gold. So when we look at this more accurately, it, was, it should be translated as a nose ring. In Isaiah, we read in 321, the rings and the nose jewels. And we see the same word in here used in, in Isaiah and in Genesis. And it was a custom for women in the Middle East countries to wear nose rings. So that's what it's referring to here. It is used when Yahuwah describes his bride in Ezekiel, Ezekiel, and how he will clothe and put ornaments on her jewels is the word translated and forehead should be nose. So in Ezekiel 16, 12, and it says, and I put a jewel on your forehead and earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown upon your head. So when we, the translation of this should be, uh, uh, forehead should be nose. So should be clothed there with the jewels on nose. So again, talking about a nose ring. Again, these items that the servant had given to Rivka, which have shown that Abraham had much wealth. They were given to her in kindness. And his camel, as a reward for, for what she had done, she'd been her kindness that she had given to him and the camels. We see it was just to show that Abraham had wealth. Abraham would be able to, to care for her and to look after her if she was to leave her family. And said, whose daughter are you? Tell me, I pray you, in, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethel, the son of Milcah, which you bore unto Nahor. She said, moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. So as well as doing what the servant required for a sign of her generosity and kindness, she shows that she is Abraham's family as well. And again, she shows the hospitality that Yahweh requires from us, we know. Last week, we spoke a lot about hospitality. And here we see it again, Leviticus 25, 35. And if your brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with you, then you shall relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with you. So we see that we should be caring. And we looked at it last week. We've seen how, how Abraham and Lot would care. They would have that hospitality for people. And then we've seen the, the opposite. We've seen, we've seen Sodom and Amorah and how they, they, they would not treat people with hospitality and how they would have judgment come upon them. So continuing now, verse 26, 27. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped Yahweh. And he said, Blessed be Yahweh, high Adonai of Abraham, who has not left destitute my Adonai of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, Yahweh led me to the house of my Adonai's brethren. So yeah, after hearing that she's from Abraham's brother, he blesses and praises Yahweh and believes that she is surely the wife appointed by Yahweh for Yitzhak. He believes then that this is a sign. We see how Yah provided, how Yah led him to her and Rivka, daughter of the house of El. Amen. And we see how, how Yah made this journey prosperous. And the damsel ran and told of her mother's house these things. And Rivka had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out to the man unto the well. So, so it's possible that it's called her mother's house as her father was dead. Therefore, so through this we'll see how there's not a lot of mention of her father here. Um, so it's possible that her father could be dead. And it was her brother who, here. We see a brother come out, and brother that's responsible for her and represent her in the marriage proceedings going forth and it came to pass when she saw that when he saw the earrings and braces upon his sister's hands and when he heard the words of Rivka her sister saying thus spoke the man unto me then he came unto the man and beheld he stood by the camels at the well so we see 
and it says when he saw the earrings and the bracelets it's possible that it was hinting towards his character that he would and we'll see this character later with Yaakov in deceiving him into marrying his the wrong sister in Genesis 29 and not allowing him to leave in seeing the gold he became curious of the servant we see how when he's dealing with Yaakov he doesn't want to lose him because he's prosperous to him he's 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 being blessed through Yaakov so he doesn't want to lose Yaakov because he wants to keep getting receiving these blessings these financial gains that he's receiving so it's possible when he sees these the the nose ring the bracelets that are on his sister is interested is peaked and he's he's interested then or who's provided these for you so carrying on and he said come in you blessed of Yahweh wherefore stand you without for I have prepared the house and a room for the camels. And the man came into the house and he ungirded the camels and gave straw and provident for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him. So here we see the use of the name Yahweh by Laban as he is from Avram's family. It would appear that he is also worshipping Yahweh. So when we see that name of Yahweh and it shows why Abraham wanted the servant to go and find a wife from here. So verse 33. And there was set meat before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, speak on. So here we see it showing the diligence and zeal that this servant had for his master, Abraham. And the task that he'd been assigned. It's too important for him to wait until after food to ask. He wants to, he wants to speak straight away of what Abraham has sent him to do. Again, I believe that we can draw parallels between the servant and Yahushua at the Pesach, at the Passover. So Luke 21, 14 onwards, it says, And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Pesach with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until I be fulfilled in the kingdom of Elohim. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Elohim shall come. So we see here both will not eat until they've completed their task. The servant was to ask for Rivka's hand in marriage to Yitzhak and Yahushua until Yahweh's kingdom is with us. We've seen both not wanting to eat again until uh, the fulfillment of their task. Again, I believe a, a, a link, a parallel we can see again between the servant and Yahushua. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And Yahweh has blessed my Adonai greatly, and he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and manservants and maidservants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my Adonai's woman, bore a son to my Adonai when she was old. And unto him has he given all that he has. And my Adonai made me swear seven oaths, saying, You shall not take a woman to my son of the daughters of the Kenaim, in whose land I dwell. For you shall go into my father's house and into my kindred and take a woman unto my son. And I said unto my, unto my El Adonai, perchance the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, Yahweh, before whom I walk, will send his angel with you and prosper your way. And you shall take a woman from my son and my kindred and my father's house. Then shall you be clear from this my oath when you come to my kindred. And if they give you not one, you shall be clear from my oath. So he was just recapping now of what he has been called to do. And it came this day unto the well and said, O oh, Yahweh Adonai, Elahai Adonai of Abraham, if now you do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of the water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes forth to drink water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray you, a little water of your pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink you, and I will also draw for your camels, let the sun same be the woman whom Yahweh has appointed out of my Adonai's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rivka came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down into the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray you. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give your camels drink also. So I drink, 
and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore unto him. And I put the earrings upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped Yahweh and blessed Yahweh higher than I of Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my Adonai brother's daughter unto his son. So now carrying on, so you just recapped what the events that took place. And now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my Adonai, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeds forth, Yahweh. We cannot speak unto you bad or good. Behold, Rivka, Rivka is before you. Take her and go and let her be your Adonai's son's woman as Yahuwah has spoken. So we see, as we mentioned before, it's possible that Laban, um, so as mentioned, Laban was the eldest brother to Rivka. Here we we have mention of Bethuel again, you know, the father. However, this time, this is the only time that he's mentioned. So again, it is possible that he may be dead. And another reason for this is that Laban's name is actually placed first. You'd think um, if Bethuel were alive, it would have Bethuel, but then Laban. However, we have Laban first. So again, possible pointing to the fact that it's Laban that's alive and it's Laban that is actually dealing with this situation here as the eldest son. So we see that it was, um, we see that it was not their decision, but it was from Yahweh. They say they, say they could not speak they had no voice in the matter. They could not go beyond the will of Yahweh. We see that this word in used of bad or good um, with Balak, with the bad or good being evenly balanced. We see this in Numbers 24, 13. It says, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of Yahweh to do either good or bad on my own mind. What Yahweh says that will I speak. So we see that here they can't go beyond what Yah wants. And if Yah wants Rivka to marry Yitzhak, then that is the will that must be followed. And we've seen it with Balaam and Balak. Balaam was unable to curse people um, because Yah did not want it. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard the words, he worshipped Yahweh, bowing himself to the earth. So in all things that were done, we see this servant here bowing down and worshipping Yahweh. And this is how we should live, knowing all things are gained through Yahweh. Also, again, we can see a parallel there, because throughout Scripture, throughout the Bessera, we see many times Yah Yahushua going and praying to the Father, going and praying to Yahweh, you know on what to do and giving thanks. We see him praying continually, going off to pray. First Thessalonians 5, 16, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of Elohim and Mashiach Yahushua concerning you. Psalm 107 and 1, O oh, give thanks unto, El Yah, unto Yahweh, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. And Hebrews 13, 5, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to Elohim continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So continually we should be giving praise. We should be giving thanks. We should be praising his name, giving thanks for all things. And in Revelation, we, we read of those elders that are around the throne room that are continually giving worship and praise to Yahweh, a picture of how we should be on earth. So Revelation eleven fifteen onwards, it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Adonai, and of his Mashiach, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which, which sat before Elohim on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped Elohim, saying, We give thanks, O Yahweh Elohim Sebaot, which are and which was and is to come, because you have taken to you your great power and have reigned. We see here we should, like the elders around the throne, continually giving thanks and praise. We should be giving continuous thanks and praise to Yahweh.
And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rivka. He gave also to her brother and her father precious and mother precious things. So the word here for jewels is kilai, and it actually says article, vessel, implement, utensil. So it's more likely that the objects that the servant gave to the family were, were vessels, were objects of sustainable use and value instead of just jewels. Um, things that they could use in their home, things that would be were durable and help them, not just a bag of jewels, shall we say, a bag of fancy necklaces and whatever, rings, but actual things which were uh, sustainable and useful. And during the betrothal process, the formal agreement of a marriage, gifts would have been given to the family of the bride, and that's what we're seeing here. Again, we see that Bethuel, the father of Rivka, is not mentioned, again, supporting this idea that he was dead and that his name was just inserted into verse 50 to say who was the father. Um, but we do not see him taking place in any of these events. It's either believed that he was dead or that he was estranged from the family. But we don't see him here. And no mention again of him. So carrying on now. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning and said, Send me away unto my Adonai. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least ten, and that shall go. So interestingly then, we see they, they ask that she abide with them, and this, we see this use of ten days. So opinion is divided whether they were asking in days, months, or years. However, we do see in times of scripture, this testing lasting 10 days. It's quite interesting. We see in Daniel uh, not wanting to eat the king's meat in 114, book of Daniel. The assembly of Smyrna in prison tested for 10 days in Revelation 2.10. And also we see that time between Teruah and Kippur 10 days. So it's, it's quite interesting here that we're seeing this 10 days mentioned. And he said unto him, Hinder me not, seeing Yahweh has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go unto my Adonai. So the servant does not wish to linger or waste any more time. He'd rather not delay and return with Yitchak. Yitchak soon to be wife. As mentioned last week, through the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, we should not be lingering in what we've been called to do. There they were called to leave. They were called to come out. And we see that they lingered. We see that Lot's woman turned around and was turn to a pillar of salt for this but when we've been called to do something we should not hesitate and it's something that me and Catherine discussed last last week on our on our blood of the lamb show when we're called we should not hesitate genesis 20 and i'll carry on now verse 57 and they said we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth and they called rivka and said unto her will you go with this man and she said i will go and they sent away rivka their sister and their nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. So Rivka responds that she is ready and does not want to wait or delay, and neither should we. We should look to seek Yahweh's kingdom first. We should not be hesitating. We should not be waiting to go and seek the kingdom. We should not be putting things of this world before it, putting it off. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye the kingdom first of Elohim, and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. If we seek his kingdom first, we seek that righteousness first, all things will be added unto us. And that is what we should be doing. Again, another picture for us in Rivka of those we can just see in this bride, this bride that we are to be, we can see in Rivka. Verse 16, they blessed Rivka and said unto her, you are our sister, be the mother of thousands of millions and let your seed possess the gate of those which hate them so we see she's blessed by her mother and we see that this is the same blessing following abraham faith when he was tested in sacrificing yitzhak when he bound yitzhak so we see here in genesis 22 17 that in blessing i will bless you and in multiplying i will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven the stand the sand which is upon the seashore and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. So again, we can see these parallels in these two blessings that, that have been received. This blessing was received to 
Avraham, we see this blessing now onto his Yahid, his son Yitzhak, and we see Rivka's mother giving her this same blessing. So in this blessing, we have two aspects. We have them being blessed in their seed, being so numerous, and also the prevailing in war against their enemies. When we see possess the gate of them which hate you, or possess the gate of his enemies, we see this prevailing against the enemies. And when we think, actually, when we go back to the garden, and we think of how uh, Yahuwah said that we the the seed of Kua will overcome that serpent seed. We can see here that we will overcome the enemy. We will overcome that enemy of sin and death and Hasatan through Yahusha, through the seed we will overcome. And Rivka arose and her damsels and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rivka and went his way. A door of Yahweh says, same character was displayed by Ruth. She forsook all life back at home and chose widowhood so that she could seek the Elohim of Naomi and his will, no matter what she chose. Yah, amen, sister. And it's such a wonderful picture we can see in so many women through scripture. Um, such a wonderful picture on, on for a um, picture on how we are to behave, how we are to be that bride, how we are to forsake all that we had, like Naomi, like Rivka here, leaving her family and going after going after Yah. Amen. Thank you very much, daughter of Yahweh. So we see the bride follow after the servant, the one who has come for her, and we should be looking to follow after Yahusha, who came for us. Isaiah with Yeshiyahu 48 17. Thus says Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Yashorel. I am Yahweh Lecheka, which teaches you to profit, which leads you by the way that you should go. Deuteronomy 13, 4. You shall walk after Yahweh Lecheka and fear him and guard his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. Hosea 11, 10. They shall walk after Yahweh. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. And we see we should walk after Yahweh there. And Yahusha tells us to follow after him. Matthew 16, 24. Then said Yahusha unto his Talmudin, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And if we follow him, we will not walk in darkness. John 8, 12. But Yahusha again said unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He, world. he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So we should be prepared to leave everything, to go and walk and follow after Yahushua, to follow after Yah, much like Rivka doing here with the servant, and much like the of Yahweh said with Ruth following after Naomi, to follow after Yahuwah. We should be willing to do that. Again, such wonderful lessons for us to learn as we prepare to be that bride for our Messiah. Verse 62, and Yitzhak came from the way of the well of Be'er Lachoi Roi, for he dwelt in the country of the Negev. So interestingly, we see that Yitzhak was at the well where the angel of Yahweh appeared unto Hagar in Genesis 16, 7 to 14, which it was called Be'er Lachoi Roi. We see that following the death of Abraham, he would dwell in this area as well. So next week, we'll see that he'll be dwelling in this area in Genesis 25, 11. And this well was called Be'er Lachoi Roi, and its definition, Brown Driver Briggs defines it as the well of the living one seeing me. We know that Yitzhak believed on Yahweh and he, and that he would see him and bless him. And we must think that Yah is the living one who sees us, who sees us all. He provides for us, he sees us, he knows what we're going through, and he will bless us. He's always with us and he never forsakes us. So it's free. And Yitzhak went out to meditate in the field in the evening and he lifted up his eyes and saw and beheld the camels were coming. So Yitzhak went to see, to seek after Yahweh, to pray to him and speak with him. We see meditate used in other passages. We see it used many times as in talking about communicating with Yah. However, here the word is suach, and it is, appears that this is the only time that this word is used in scripture. So I don't know what to, to make of that, but it's the only time it's used. 
we should be meditating, praying, communicating with Yah in all things. Psalm 77, 11 and 12. I will remember the works of Yah. Surely I remember your wonders of old. I will meditate also of all your works and talk of your doings. In Psalm 1, 2. But his delight is in the Torah of Yahweh and in his Torah he meditates day and night. And we see that it was during this time, during this time of praying, during this time of meditating, communicating and seeking after Yah, that the servant returned with the bride. This is another reason why we should be praying. We should be meditating. We should be trying to seek and speak to Yahweh continually, as we are told that no one knows the day or the hour when he will return. Now, Mark 13, 22 onwards, it says to 13, 32 to 37 says, but of the day and hour, Knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Adam is of the man, a man taken a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commended the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the Adonai of the house comes at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Oh, thank you very much, Shoshana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brother Michael. And Matthew 24, 43 and 44. But I know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready for in such an hour as ye know not, the son of Adam comes. Oh, thank you very much, Sue, for joining us. Have a blessed Sabbath day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Shabbat shalom, sister. Thank you very much for spending this precious your precious time with us. Really do appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful day. So we see here how Yitzhak was praying. He was watching. He was trying to communicate and wait and talk with Yah when the bride returned. When the bride came, we should be continually praying, meditating, seeking Yah, speaking to Yah, because we know not the time or the hour when the bridegroom will return. So again, we can see such wonderful links in this Torah portion, such prophet prophetic links as well. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Yitzhak, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walks in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my Adonai. Therefore she took a veil and covered himself. So this was part of the custom for marriages. The, the bride was to be veiled or covered so that the groom would not see her. In doing this act, she is making Yitchak aware that she is that bride. She is preparing herself so that the bridegroom is aware who the bride is. When we walk in righteousness, when we become that bride journeying to the bridegroom, then we will be covered by Yah. Psalm 91.4 He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His trust shall be your shield and buckler. And we want to be covered in Yah. We want to be covered in his love and his mercy in everything. And the servant told Yitchak all the things that had been done. And Yitzhak brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rivka and she became his woman and she lo and he loved her and Yitzhak was comforted after his mother's death. So it would have been the custom for husbands and wives to have different tents. We see that Sarah was dead. This tent now passed on to Yitzhak's wife. Again, this signals that she's replacing Sarah um, as Yitzhak would replace his father Abraham when he died. Like as we we mentioned, um, the focus next week will be on uh, Rivka and Yitzhak as Abraham will die. And we see the importance of a woman to a man to be their strength and to be their comfort in times of grief and loss. Cure was taken from Adam's rib from his side or support. The righteous woman is to hold up her husband and give support when he needs it. And we see that 
this difficult time for him and losing a mother, he has Rivka here to help support him. And yeah, uh, Shoshana used to be um, talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Gomorrah used to be a wonderful, lush place. That's why we see Lot in, um, I believe it's Genesis 13. I believe it's Genesis 13 when him and Abraham separate. We see Lot wanting that, desiring that area, that land, because it was so fruitful, it was so lush, it was such a wonderful area. However, now that area has been destroyed because of that destruction that came upon it. So we now be begin Genesis 25, and this is the last chapter now, this Torah portion. And again, Abraham took a woman, and her name was Keturah. So this event did not take place until after Sarah had died. We see that he remained loyal and faithful throughout their marriage. He, he had such a love for Sarah, his woman. And, um, and we read how he, he mourned, how he wept, how he really grieved for her. So the name is Keturah, and it means incense. And it says also it could be perfumed, Keturah, a wife of Abraham. It comes from the word Qatar, quite interesting with what we're coming up, but there, the word Qatar, and um, we see that it's uh, through the idea of fumigation in a closed place and perhaps thus driving out the occupants. Also, it says to smoke, that is to turn into fragrance by fire, and we see especially as an act of worship, to burn incense, to sacrifice, it talks about incense. So we see this name, this name of Keturah linked with worship. And it's possible when I was looking at this name, it just popped to my head that it was possible that Yah provided Abraham with this woman to help him in dealing with this grief and loneliness after Sarah, that he came to Yah in worship, in, in, in praying to Yah. He came worshiping Yah and, and asked him for some help, for some comfort during his loss of Sarah and Yah possibly provided this woman for him. We will see, though, by the end of this, that she does not replace Sarah as he will be buried with Sarah. She was just to help him deal with this loss. And she bore him Zimran and Yokshan and Midian and um, Midian and Yitzbach and Shuash and Yokshan begat Shiva and Didan and his sons Didan were Asherim and Letushim and Lutamim and the sons of Midian. Ipha and Ephah and Hanok and Arijah and Eldaah, all these were the children of Keturah. So the descendants from Abraham and his second marriage are listed here. We hear of no mention after this of Zimran, of Yokshan, Mid Midan and Yitzbak over then here and in the book of Chronicles. It's possible that Shuaf uh, was mentioned in the book of Job as one of his friends and so in job 2 11 it says now when job's three friends heard of all his evil that was come upon him they came everyone from his own place elpaz of temia and builder of shushi so it's possible that those some people have linked uh, this from job with the name of one of abraham's descendants and we know that midian we have more mention of they would become famous traders they also trade they're the ones that traded joseph to mitzrayim in genesis 37 28 and 36. it was where moshe dwelt exodus 2 15 and 16 and we read that jifro was a midian priest as well exodus 18 1 and finally they would become very dangerous to the children of yeshua which culminated in gideon's battle with them And Avram gave all that he had unto Yitzhak. Uh, and, and Avram gave all that he had unto Yitzhak. So Avram had many sons and descendants from Keturah. However, Yahweh declared that it was Yitzhak who was to be his heir, to be all that he had. Yitzhak was that seed which Yahweh promised Avraham and Sarah. So we see this in Genesis 17, 15, 16. And Elohim, Elohim said unto El Avram, As for Sarah, your woman, you shall not call her. Sarai, but Sarah, for her name shall be, and I will bless her and give you a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings and peoples shall be of her. Genesis twenty-two seventeen. That in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sands which upon the seashore, 
and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So we see here that it was following the sacrifice of Yitzhak, the binding of Yitzhak, it was reiterated, this promise by Yah. This blessing. But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Yitzhak, his son, while they yet lived, eastward unto the east valley east country so he his remaining children received gifts or portions such as Ishmael, and were sent away towards the east where avraham dwelt in Beersheba, and it's believed to be the saro arabian desert i believe that show she is talking about that area as well in the comments that's why i didn't put it up yet because we see that he sent them off towards that country towards um or mount sinai was in saudi arabia we see Thank you, Shoshi. Verse 7 and 8. And, and these were the days of the years of Abraham's life when he lived, a hundred, three, four, and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up his ruach and died in a good old age, an old man full of years, and was gathered to his people. So now, just going to look at some verses now from the book of Yovelin, where we're given more details on the death of Abraham. So, this is Yovelim or Ju Jubilees, chapter 22. So this is verse 1 through to 4. And it came to pass in the first week in the 40th, in the 44th Jubilee, in the second year, that is, the year in which Abraham died, that Yitzhak and Yishmael came from the well of the oath to celebrate the feast of Shavuot, that is, the feast of the first fruits of the harvest, to Abraham, their father. And Abraham rejoiced because his two sons had come. For Yitzhak had many possessions in Beersheba, and Yitzhak, was wont to go and see his possessions and to return to his father. And in those days, Ishmael came to see his father and they both came together and Yitzhak offered a sacrifice for an ascending smoke offering and presented it on the altar of his father, which, had, which he had made in Hebron. And he offered a thank offering and made a feast of joy before Yishmael, his brother, and Rivka made new cakes from the new grain and gave them to Yaakov, his her son, to make them to take them to Abraham, his father, from the first fruits of the land, that he might eat and bless the creator of all things before he died. Now this chapter now, I'm not going to go into it, but um, the remaining chapter 22, it continues with a wonderful prayer and blessing by Abraham before he dies. And it really is, it's, it's wonderful if, if anybody wants to look into that. I've we're going to skip to the next chapter, uh, chapter 23, verses 1 through 7. And he placed two fingers of Yaakov on his eyes, and he blessed the, Eloh the Elohim, Elohim of Elohim, and he covered his face and stretched out his feet and slept the sleep of eternity and was gathered to his fathers. And notwithstanding all this, Yaakov was lying in his bosom and knew not that Abraham, his father's father, was dead. And Yaakov awoke from his sleep and beheld Abraham was cold as ice. And he said, Father, Father, but there was none that spoke. And he knew that he was dead. And he arose from his bosom and ran and told Rivka, his mother. And Rivka went to Yitzhak in the night and told him. And they went together and Yaakov with them and a lamp was in his hand. And when they had gone and they found Abraham lying dead. And Yitzhak fell on his face of his father and wept and kissed him. And the voices were heard in the house of Abraham, and Yishmael his son arose and went to Abraham his father and wept over Abraham his father, he and all the house of Abraham, and they wept with a great weeping. And his sons Yitzhak and Yishmael buried him in the double cave near Sarah his woman, and they wept for him forty days, all the men of the house, and Yitzhak and Yishmael and all their sons and all the sons of Keturah in their place, and the days of weeping for Abraham were ended. So we see there in that account there from Jubilees in, in chapter 22 and 20, uh, 23, it's talking about the time when Abraham died. And it, we see that it, it took place at Shavuot. It's quite important. We see many things take place in Shavuot. We see the covenant renewed at Shavuot. We see Yitzhak being born at Shavuot. We see Yitzhak event with him weaning at Shavuot, and we see here now with Abraham's death at Shavuot, so it's quite interesting. And another thing to take from that is that we see that he died with Yaakov as well. Um, yeah, it, it really is 
it's it's very sad and beautiful at the same time shoshi um yeah it's really is it's you know makes you feel for for yako um having his grandfather dying in his arms like i say it's very beautiful this tour portion but so much sorrow as well in it so carrying on and the son and his son yitchak and yishmael buried him in the cave of macpala in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohor the Chetai, which is before Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Chet, where uh, there was Abraham buried and Sarah his woman. So we see that Abraham was buried with Sarah. They were reunited in de death in the place that had been purchased for them, much like we will be reunited with Yahuwah in death if we believe in Yahusha. And again, it's just another wonderful picture that seeing this how we will be reunited in death with our first, our one and true love, our first love. John eleven twenty five. 25. Yahushua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, he shall be, you shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And I just see here that it just reminds me of a revelation where it talks about, you know, how we need to return believe it's in chapter two it talks about returning to that first love that that first love and that's what we should be doing we should be making sure that we return to our first love our true love of yahoo and yahusha which has been corrupted by many other religions shall we so it, it's been corrupted this the paganness with with falsehoods it's just been corrupted but we need to make sure that we return to our first love and we believe in Yahushua, we believe in the truth, we walk in his way, then at death we will be reunited. And amen, you are as my king, just like Yahushua's sacrifice, it was beautiful, but so sad, and amen. It's so, Yahushua dying for us, it's, it's so sad, but it's so beautiful at the same time. It really is, uh, it's, it's difficult to comprehend sometimes how to feel about it. Should you be joyous about it or should you be sad? It's, you have the times where it's a mixture of both. It really is difficult. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham, that Elohim blessed his son Yitchak, and Yitchak dwelt by the well Be'er Lachoy Roi. So we see Yahweh here bless Yitchak, showing that he was the one chosen from the seed of Abraham. We don't read that he blesses Yishmael, he blesses Yitchak, showing that he was that chosen son. He was the Yaqid, he was the son of of the Ruach, he was born of the Ruach and not like Yishmael, who was born of the flesh. So we see that Yahweh choose and bless him. Now we're getting towards the end of this Torah portion. Now these are the generations of Yishmael, Abraham's son, who Hagar the Mitzrayim, Sarah's handmaid, brought unto Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Yishmael by their names according to their generation. The first one of Yishmael, Nabayuf and Kadar and Abidel and Nivsam and Mit. Mish, Mishma and Duma and Masa Hadar and Taima Yuter Nafishi and Kudama. These are their sons of Yishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their ca castles. Twelve princes according to their nations. And these are the years of the life of Yishmael, a hundred and thirty and seven years. And he gave up his Ruach and died and was gathered unto his people. And they dwelt from Shavalach unto Shur. That is before Mitzrayim, and you go towards Ashura, and he died in the presence of all his brethren. So we end this Torah portion with the naming of the sons of Yishmael. And much like Yasharel, he would have 12 sons. It's quite interesting when we, we look at the book of Yashar, because we see that Abraham gave Hagar 12 loaves of bread when they departed. So it says, And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah, and he rose up early in the morning, and he took twelve loaves and a bottle of water, which he gave to Hagar, and sent her away her son. And Hagar went with her son to the wilderness, and they dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, with the inhabitants of the wilderness. And Yishmael was an archer, and he dwelt in the wilderness a long time. So we see that those twelve loaves. And amen, sister. Thank you, daughter of Yahweh, for putting this in. Revelation 2.4 somewhat against you because you have left your first love remember therefore from thence you are falling and repent amen and like abraham abraham never forgot his first love he may have been married again he may have had sons again he may have had more children however he never forgot that first love 
that blessing still went to Yitchak. He never forgot that. He was buried with Sarah. We just we need to remember that. We need to remember and not forget our first love, our true love. So thank you very much for putting that up. So throughout this Torah portion then, we're seeing pictures of Yahuwah paying for us in the form of his son. And we see the servant being sent to prepare the bride. All through this, we have pictures of our Mashiach, Yahusha, who came to this world to acquire and prepare his bride. And after he returned to the Father, he sent the Comforter, the Ruach HaKadosh, to prepare us. Read this in John 14, 26 to 29. But the Comforter, which is the Ruach HaKadosh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before I come to pass that when it comes to pass, you might believe. So we see there how when Yahushua would leave, he would send that comforter to us, the Ruach HaKadosh to us. We see the Ruach HaKadosh to prepare us as well. So in recapping then, we see this, we begin this portion with that death of Sarah and Abraham perched in a cave for her. We then see our Abba Yah in this. We can see our Abba Yah in this and how he paid the ultimate price for us from our death in sin. Next, he sent his servant to find a bride for his Yaqid. All these are filled with pictures of Yahusha and how he was sent to prepare his bride for his second coming. In Rivka, we see the characteristics that we as the bride should have and we end with the death of Abraham. Again, returning to his first love in that cave, not forgetting his Yahid. And again, it's just so many wonderful pictures throughout this portion. So I thank you all for being with me today and, and watching. Uh, I thank all the comments. Uh, they're all so insightful. They're all so wonderful. And it's really is such a blessing to have you all with us. I really do thank you. Um, I really do thank you all for being with us. I hope this study was a blessing to you. So I hope you were able to see something new in this. I know that um, over the past year when I've when I've come and looking at this Torah portion again, it, uh, my eyes have been opened a bit more and I've seen more, especially with these links and pictures to Yahweh and Yahusha in the servant, it really, and, and us in the bride in Rivka, it really has made this Torah portion come to light for me. So I really hope that this was an insightful blessing for you all and um, again i thank you all for being with us you've always had such wonderful comments and really is so helpful makes it so much easier with all you in the chat so i thank you michael thank you brother ma thank you very much asia thank you very much sister for being with us shoshi thank you for making it it's great to have you with us you are my king thank you so much yeah, I hope you're able to find stuff in there as well. Door of Yahweh, as always, thank you. Such a blessing, so helpful, so insightful as well. Uh, Dredge, thank you for being with us, brother. Shalom, thank you very much, brother. I really do appreciate your support and being with us. I really do. I thank you for joining us. Uh, Rin Tin Tin as well, blessings to you, and thank you very much. So, everybody, you want to get your shofars ready? We'll get ready to blow them in a bit. Uh, we'll get ready to say blessing and leave you to your sabbath to hope you have a wonderful day oh thank you very much brother it's such a blessing we well me and Catherine wouldn't be able to come forward and do these studies with you do these shows with you if it wasn't for your support and love and prayer so we thank you all for it really is such a blessing to us and um, i thank you all again so with that we do the blessing yahweh Bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yahweh lift his countenance upon you and bring you his shalom. In the name of Yahushua, amen. Bo Yahushua, Bo, amen. Thank you, Rinton Tin, again. Anybody, if you want to get in touch with us, please email us on uh, bloodofthelandministries.blm at gmail.com. 
check out our YouTube channel, you know, our YouTube channel, with Blood of the Lamb Ministries. Make sure you um, subscribe and like. Also, we may be having to change um, our settings soon because we're getting a lot of um, rude comments, shall we say, um, some uh, com- distracting comments, shall we say, that aren't from followers and believers and people that want to just uh, obviously look at truth and, and from bots as well. So we may have to have it so that you cannot comment without subscribing just to try and prevent that from happening. So if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe because we do appreciate and we love all your comments. Um, make sure as well, Tuesday will next be beyond with Catherine, my wonderful wife, bringing Menorah moments. Really looking forward to what she has to bring. So please make sure you check that out this Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. UK or 4.30 EST. And then me and Catherine will be back next week and looking forward to uh, to next week on Blood of the Lamb, Friday, 9.30 UK or 4.30 EST. And it should be an interesting one next week. So with the time we're in, please make sure you check that out. So again, I thank you. Yeah, Shoshi, it can be a bit distracting sometimes and it can be hard. And uh, we, we, we don't want those kind of comments on here. You know, we're trying to fill this up with the Ruach. We're trying to be filled with the Ruach and with Yard Shalom and love. And sometimes there can be some very distracting comments from bots that, um, and rude ones as well. And we don't want to we don't want to subject any of you to that because it's not fair on you. You come here to be filled with the word. You don't want to see depravities and none of us do. So I thank you all for being with us. I look forward to seeing you in this upcoming week. I pray that you all have a blessed Sabbath, a blessed day. And with that, I could ramble on talking to you all day, but you've all got more important things to do, I'm sure. I'll see you soon. Shabbat shalom, brothers and sisters. Shabbat shalom.